What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be breaking down how to be the best wide receiver on your team this year. So I hope this video helps you guys out, hope it could teach you a few new things, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you guys would like to train with us this offseason, we are coming out to 15 different locations across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up, we'll be coming out to San Francisco, California, then Orlando, Florida, and then Phoenix, Arizona. That is a new addition to our camp tour. And then we're coming out to Charlotte, Dallas the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those cities, would like to get some work in with us, two days of training, eight hours total, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So now to be the best wide receiver on your team, especially in today's um, you know football world, high school, college, NFL football world, you have to be able to run routes. So let's look at this first example from this wide receiver running a dig route versus inside shade press. So this is one of those uncomfortable situations. As a wide receiver, you have to be very comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So you have to run a dig. He's lined up at the top of the numbers, DB's inside shade press. We automatically should know this, especially if you're familiar with this channel, that he is trying to protect the inside. He does not want to let me run an inside route. He does not want to let me run a slant, a dig, a post, anything over the middle. He is trying to force us into the 12th defender. And who's the 12th defender? The sideline, right? That's his help. The sideline is his help. If he was outside leverage, the safety would be his help, right? So he's always going to have help, and DBs always know how to use their help. So as a wide receiver, what we need to do off the line of scrimmage is threaten his leverage. I need to make him think about the inside route just for a split second so I could get up and get a free release. So if I attack his leverage to the inside, and he does exactly what this DB does, just takes a step. That's all he has to do. Just take a step to protect the leverage. I want off the line. It's not about breaking this guy's ankles every single time. It is about being able to create separation at the top of the route. Off the line, I want to keep timing and I want to keep spacing with my QB and with my offense as a whole. So when this wide receiver takes off to the outside, you see he's got the he's got hands on him. DB had a good recovery, but because we got a free release and because I'm moving with some speed, I can easily shrug this guy off, fight the hands, secondary release. To now I'm in a position where I have restacked this DB. So now, this is what comes down to knowing how to run routes. As the, To be the best wide receiver on your team, you got to know these things. Because if you're just out there like a chicken with your head cut off, cut off and just running around doing crazy stuff and you have no reason why it's not calculated, you're not the best wide receiver on your team. You need to have a calculated plan each rep. So off the line, and this guy's a follower of our channel too, by the way, so this is where he knows this stuff. And he actually sent me this clip himself. And he, know, he knows, his thought process is, I'm working to the outside to restack or to get him on my inside hip so I could throw him by. So he's able to actually restack him. Now when we restack him, what can we do? We could give him a move. I give him a crossover. I could give him a rocker step, a one, two, get him to bite to the outside fake and then look at all the spacing that I have on the play. I'm not running into other wide receivers, running other routes in a real game scenario. And obviously I got a ton of separation. That is textbook right there. Now, like I said, Got to have a plan. It's got to be calculated. And like this wide receiver would tell you, if this if this DB was running hip to hip with him, if the fighting of the hands didn't go so well, what do you think he would do? He'd put his hand on the back of his hip, back of his shoulder, and slip right underneath and still run that dig with plenty of space. When you are running a dig at the top of the numbers, fellas, you cannot catch the ball past the opposite hash or on the opposite hash. You have to catch the ball in this window because that is what we are trying to set up and that is how spacing works. You cannot sacrifice spacing. And one-on-ones, it gets very, very easy to think that because it's like, oh, I got to catch, I won one. It's not real. You need to make sure that your routes are realistic. That is the only way that we get better, okay? I want to add that, but to be the best wide receiver on your team, you have to make sure you know how to run routes. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver taking that outside release, hitting that rocker step, and then winning on that dig. Okay, so now... Obviously, I feel that Stephon Diggs is probably um, the best wide receiver on the Bills, I would say. I like Gabe Davis. I think he's a great wide receiver. But Diggs is just that. He's that wide receiver one. He's their guy, right? He's Josh Allen's guy. He's who he's going to go to when he needs a score, when he needs a big play. So one of the things that you have to be able to do to be the best wide receiver on your team, not only be able to run routes, but you got to know how to sell routes, so we're looking at this double move here from Stefan Diggs. I'm going to play this full speed. So he's running this like post corner route, if you will. And um, you could think of it like a post out route, I guess you could say. But some of the, th the three keys to selling your routes are speed, body language, 
and eyes. So if I'm running like a sluggo route, if I'm running an out and up, um, on that first break, like the slant, the out, I got to do those three things. I have to make sure that my eyes go to my QB. I have to make sure, or not even necessarily your eyes, like the eyes will bring the body there. But my eyes got to go to my quarterback. Then my body language goes. That should follow with the eyes. And I still have speed to the break. So you see when Diggs runs this route, he takes an outside release. He breaks to the post. What's the first thing to snap? The eyes. Now, reason why I don't put a huge ton of emphasis on the eyes is because the DB is not supposed to be looking there anyways. But in this specific case, because it's tight coverage, that snap of the eyes can help. And now when you snap the eyes, your hips and your shoulders follow. And that is what the DB should be watching. He's supposed to be reading your speed and he's supposed to be watching your body language. So if your hips and your shoulders can commit to the route, if your eyes can snap and that helps with that, and you maintain your speed, DB has to bite on it. And then you see when he puts the brakes on, we got the DB peeking a little bit in the backfield and that opened up a whole lot of space for me. So fellas, this goes for any route too, by the way. Like, so let's say Diggs, let's say he comes off the ball here. And like, let's say this was like down back here by like the opposite 30 yard line. And let's say he's running a comeback. If he's running a comeback route, all the way until he hits that break point, like let's say the comeback's at 15, he needs to make sure that his eyes are forward, his hips and shoulders are forward, and he's running with some speed because that's what's going to get the DB to bite. So it doesn't have to just be on a double move. It is just further highlighted on this double move to show you guys what goes into selling routes. And like I've said in the past, I'm not trying to get you ready for a DB who's a scrub. Because we can all beat that guy. If you know how to run 20 yards without falling down, it's probably going to be a good matchup with the scrub guy. But a decent DB, a disciplined DB, a guy who's been well coached at the DB position, because let me tell you this, in high school, it's a lot of guys who just couldn't make it as wide receivers that play DB. A lot of guys that have bad hands. In college, they are all DBs, like specialized DBs. They're the best guys in the world. They're all those guys from Florida, from Texas that went D1. So you have to make sure that you're prepared and you have to know these things and execute these things if you want to play a high level of football. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Diggs, selling this post, getting that DB to bite, and then winning on the corner. Okay, so now, next thing I want to go over here, be the best wide receiver on your team. You got to be that go-get-it guy, where it's just like, hey, just put the ball near me. I'm going to go make a play. And this is kind of like a mindset thing. Like I, I debated on whether or not I even wanted to talk about this, but I feel like you guys need to hear this, which is why I wanted to include it. But let's play this clip full speeder from Darno Mooney. He gets a little separation, ball's thrown downfield, ball is underthrown. You know what I mean? I can't stand, you know, like, and I'm just going to be honest, and I get it because I've, I've had experience with both positions, but I can't stand receivers who complain about the throws because they don't understand how hard it is to make a throw, especially in the NFL, especially when you got guys coming at you trying to take your head off. So like as a receiver, how you get the ball more is not by complaining about the throw. You get the ball more and I get it. You want your quarterback to give you a good ball. Sometimes, sometimes it's not, it's not even a catchable ball. And okay, maybe there's a conversation that needs to be had, but when it's underthrown, but it's, you could get a hand on it. You need to challenge yourself that I will do whatever it takes to make a catch on this ball. I don't care if I got a guy grabbing me. I don't care if I got a guy playing my hands because that is what a college coach, a high school coach, an NFL, that's what everybody's looking for in a wide receiver, a guy who does not care. If you put the ball near me, I'm going to catch it. I always use this analogy. Like think about this situation. You got a guy who runs a 4 3 He can run great routes, but he drops 50% of the balls that are thrown to him. 50-50 chance. You throw him two passes, he'll catch one, he'll drop one. Then you got a guy who runs average routes. He's an average wide receiver, average athleticism, but I'm talking every ball thrown in his vicinity, he will catch like 10 for 10. You could throw it low. You could almost skip the ball to him. He'll catch it. They're going to start that guy because he's more reliable because he'll catch the ball. So if you want to get on the field, if you want to be that best guy on your team, you want to be the guy who the offense is built around, the pass game is built around, because in high school, everybody's got that guy. You need to make these types of catches. You need to make sure that when that ball is thrown in your vicinity, you are coming down with it. And that is a great example there from Darnell, from Darnell Mooney making that catch. Let's play it again, full speed one more time. Again, I say that, don't complain about the ball because that's how the quarterback, like, I know how quarterbacks are wired, you guys. We're not going to come back to you with the ball if you just sit there and complain. Because like, why would I throw, why would I reward you for being, for kind of being rude to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just going to go somewhere else where a guy's going to 
actually be able to make the catch. That's how quarterbacks are wired. Even if they're told to throw it one way, they will not throw you the ball. And you could look up all these old stories of Peyton Manning. Like, you know, wide receivers will throw one hand up for a catch and then he'll kick them out of practice. Like these, these stories, quarterbacks are all similar mentally. And so you got to know how to approach your quarterback. You got to know like, hey, if that, he puts that ball near you, you should catch it because that's going to make him want to give you a better throw. And trust me, quarterbacks know when they make a bad pass. Okay, so now next example here from George Pickens. I want to talk about just the mindset that you need to have to be the best wide receiver on your team. Now, I think George Pickens has probably asserted himself as wide receiver one for the Steelers. If not, it's close with him and Johnson. Um, I haven't really followed the Steelers too much this year. But anyways, you see the attitude that he has and it's just like, it's noticeable. Like it put, people are afraid of the guy, you know, because of plays like this. So let's watch what he does here. This is something called a shock release, right? Now he's not even getting the ball on this play, right? And he's doing that type of release where he's just setting the tone early, putting the DB on his butt and then getting up into the route. Now I'm not saying you got to do this on your routes, but I'm saying like, if there's a chance where you're on the field and you could set the tone, even if it's against a scout team DB, even if it's against, like, let's say you're a junior, you're going up against a freshman guy who's playing scout team. If there's a chance to set the tone, you got to set the tone. You got to have that attitude as a wide receiver. You got to have that attitude as to be the best wide receiver on your team. You got to have that attitude because uh, if, if you want to be just average, you want to be with everybody else, that's fine by me. But if you want to play high level college ball, you want to play high level high school ball, you got to have that attitude. You got to, you got to know you're the best and you got to set the tone early. Whether Whether that's a blocking play that's not even going your way, whether that's, you know, a play like this, whether that's blocking for a quarterback on a scramble, he pulled it down and ran. Any chance you get to set the tone and let them know that you're the guy, you have to take that chance. And George Pickens does a great job of that. And everybody knows him for that too. And that's why he's probably their guy. That's why defenses will key in on him rather than Deontay Johnson. You know, maybe Deontay Johnson definitely, he's he's probably a much better route runner, probably a much more polished receiver, I would say. But I mean, who gets more targets? Who has better numbers? I don't know the exact answer to that question, but in my eyes, it's Pickens is probably the guy because he's the guy that everybody looks at. He's the guy that everybody's watching when they turn on the Steelers game. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. So just make sure, fellas, be the best wide receiver on your team. Take any opportunity you can to make sure you set the tone. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out and train with us in 15 different states this offseason, we are traveling out to check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out again. New edition in Phoenix, Arizona. I'll see you guys next time.